I came to Oxford for a very prosaic reason originally. I needed somewhere where there were people who understood galaxies. I'd worked before mostly in the Milky Way and I needed some help if I was going to explore the rest of the universe. But once here, it's become apparent the important thing is the freedom that we have. No one told me I shouldn't be fiddling about with the net. No one told me I shouldn't be looking to the public uh, to help my research. And the results have been really quite stunning. What I'm doing here is trying to understand how galaxies form, how we came to see the universe that we have around us. To do that, we've recruited the help of a quarter of a million people via a project called Galaxy Zoo. And a quarter of a million is kind of hard to get your head around, but it's just under four times Wembley Stadium. So you have to imagine everyone sitting there, tapping away on laptops, telling us things about the universe. And that's a stunning thought. When somebody visits the Galaxy Zoo website, as I'm doing now, they get given a randomly selected galaxy, and we ask simple questions. Questions like, can you see spiral arms? How many spiral arms are there? Is there a bulge at the centre of the galaxy? And each piece of information tells us something new about how that galaxy formed and what's happened to it since. The wonderful thing about having people rather than computers look at my data is that they also find all the weird stuff that's hidden amongst the normal galaxies. For example, the users recently found a whole new class of galaxy. They're small, they're round, and in our images, they're green. So the users called them P's, but they turn out to be tremendously important. These are the most efficient formers of stars anywhere in the local universe. I think what we found with Galaxy Zoo, to our surprise, is a new way of dealing with data. Uh, lots of us in all sorts of scientific fields are struggling with the sheer amount of stuff we now have. I can download images of a million galaxies instead of just studying one. And by recruiting the public in what, what we call citizen science, I think we can deal with that flood of data and free up academics to concentrate on understanding what they're seeing.